Today we're at the home of John Van Lack. Uh, this is part of an interview series of the Schenectady Proctor's Historical Committee. Uh, it is now March uh, 21st, 2014, and we are here with John Van Lack, who has a very rich history with Proctor's and, as you can see by the surroundings here, uh, has a great love of music, which he basically has shared with all of us in Schenectady. Right. That's the idea. Well, Proctor's was surely fortunate when you uh, raised that organ priority from number four to number one. Well, that, <laughs> I don't know. We'd have to talk to Mr. Gulab about that, whether that influenced him or not. But it may, ha it may have, because, uh, uh, you know, when something is fourth priority, it's down pretty low on the list. You raise it up to one. <laughs> Right. Shows they have That's what we learned at the division for the budget, right? <laughs> if it goes to number one, it gets money. That's right. <laughs> well, no, we were supposed to be there to uh, make sure it went to the right places. Well, I, I retired as chief budget examiner, but uh, I enjoyed the work over there very much. But uh, I, after 40 years and so on, I thought, well, maybe I'll try something else. Well, you've probably spent, I, I have to do some quick math here, let's see. You probably have spent over 30 years <laughs> doing organ work in the yeah. community, making well, sure was, there are organs that, that, that work. Was, and That was my recreation. Right, that's great. Can you, um, can we look at this organ and have you explain it to us? Could we? Sure, sure. <laughs>
So when I found this one is available, I <laughs> well, they had no tickets for it. So I said, I'll take it. <laughs> Where did you find this again? Uh, church in Albany. A church in Albany that yeah. just didn't know what to do with it. Yeah, and you adopted it. They were getting a new one. Okay. And uh, all mm -hmm. these shop tags had all the, I made, I made mm -hmm. all the letterings for those, and they were all, they changed the order so much that the console really didn't fit. So they had a new one made, and this one was surplus, and they used for it. Great. Mm -hmm. well, that's very good. I'd like to maybe have Frank talk to you for a minute, Frank Hackard. Hi, I'm Frank Hackard. I'm chairman of the uh, Hudson Mohawk Theater Organ Society, which is based out of Proctor's Theater. Our responsibilities are primarily the uh, maintenance of Goldie. And, uh, and John, of course, is one of the founders of our organization at Proctor's, besides having served on the board of directors of Proctor's and having been instrumental in the uh, Goldie uh -huh. family acquisition of Goldie at Proctor's. Yeah, and uh, of course, it, it proved to be a, a very smart move because uh, the, uh, the organ was a very successful part of the venue in the 80s when uh, they used to have sell-out audiences for Alan Mills' Christmas shows when uh, Proctor's was really just getting on its feet. So your interest in pipe organs goes way back to, the, uh, to you when you were a kid, right? Your, your interest in pipe organs? Oh, yeah, it goes way back, yeah. What was the, what, about what year or what age were you when you put together your first pipe organ? Oh, in my late, late teens. I, I, my father and I built a console. There was a console we built out here. And then when I found this one was available, I took this one, of course. And the other console, I don't know where it's going to, but we built the whole thing. It wasn't as big as this, it was only three manuals, but... We built it. And where was that located at that time? Furman Street. Furman Street. But then I moved it out here when we moved out here. Uh huh. So this organ contains parts from your original hobby yeah. organ. Yeah, yeah. Great. Uh, now, uh, this organ is, uh, so this organ has evolved. It has grown over over a period of many years. Uh, oh, yes. I, in fact, I have a few things more I wanted to do on it before my legs <laughs> started giving me. Uh huh. Problem because all the most of the mechanism is in the cellar. Right. The relay boards and everything are all down there. Uh huh. And uh, so uh, among the uh, sources of parts that that have gone into the construction of this organ are the console, which I think we discussed, which came from a church in Albany. Just the console came from a church in right. Albany. And but the pipes are coming from all over, right? There's, yeah, no, there's, there's no one particular... Some, some came from a church on Albany Street, some came from a church on Brandywine Avenue, and, uh, uh -huh. and uh, uh, some of the places. The xylophone that I had down there came from Texas. Mm -hmm. yeah, Was that, that one must have been from a, a theater organ. Yeah, from a theater organ in Texas. Uh-huh. And... Uh, uh, and you have uh, some, a couple of small pieces that came from the Colony Theater in Schenectady? Just, just, the, just the orchestra bells, and uh, I think the uh, uh, sleigh bells, the mechanism is back there. I think that came from there. Uh-huh. Yeah. And that noise, noise thing I had, the Chinese block. You're right, the Chinese block. Uh, so... Uh, the rest of it, I think... Went to somebody outside the city, where I don't know. Yeah, well, I, we can talk about. It was Bob Weber. Bob Weber was the the guy that had had acquired the uh, the Colony organ. Oh, it was. Yeah, it was Bob Bob Weber, and it was combined with Dick Weber's uh, mm -hmm. organ from out in the western part of the state. But uh, Bob and, Weber, Bob Weber eventually moved to Burlington, Vermont, didn't he? Yes. And both are deceased now. And Dick, I, Dick had his, uh, whoever his brother, had a world chair about the same size as Goldie in his house. Yeah. And eventually he moved to a restaurant, and he had it for a restaurant, oh, what's it, 10 or 15 years in Atlanta, Georgia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's connected. He was very fortunate that they, we had people like you 
Warren Ford, Dick Weber, Bob Weber, and a couple of others that uh, were really part of the early days of trying to save some of these pipe organs that were rapidly disappearing from, oh, from yes. theaters all over the country. Uh, there was an actor, Al Jolson, was a uh, famous film, and that was one of them that put the, that finished, that was the, that one of the first talkies that was made. Right. And that finished the uh, pipe organs in, in theaters because you didn't need them anymore. I mean, uh, some theaters had organs, some theaters had pianos. And we've already recorded, uh, many years ago, an interview with Ray Norton. Yeah. And Ray Norton, of course, was uh, one of the original organists at Proctor's. And, uh, and he was also the savior of the, uh, of the ten rank Wurlitzer that was in the Plaza Theater in Schenectady. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, uh, that was, eventually that was supposed to be uh, reassembled as an as a example of the York State. Right. Work with you. I'm yeah. told it's not there anymore. No, it's not. That. Uh, you know where it is? Yes, I do. The uh, the uh, organ was stored in the museum warehouse in Rotterdam for uh, uh, quite a number of years, and uh, they never really could get a plan or the money together to get it installed. And then with 9/11 happening, that uh, there was a lot of artifacts from 9/11 uh, attack that uh, needed to be stored somewhere. And unfortunately, the organ became uh, a target because it was taking up so much space in the warehouse, and they eventually decided that it had to go. So it was put up for auction, and uh, it was purchased by a theater preservation group from the western part of New York, out in Gowanda, New York, that, that are uh, working to uh, restore the Hollywood Theater in Gowanda. And the plan is to, uh, to install the organ there. But uh, getting back to Schenectady, though, that uh, so uh, uh, this organ then is uh, mostly made up of, of pipes from churches around the area and a few artifacts from this organ. Yes, this yeah, organ. The primary, the one that's, that's not is the tib the tibia of those wooden pipes over there, but most of them are, are church organ pipes. Uh -huh. Now uh, you put a big treble on it, though. So sounds very, rather very theatrical. Yes. Uh, so the uh, the formation of ACT was uh, 79, 1979 or so. The group formed to acquire Proctors. What year did you join the board of Proctors? Do you remember? Oh, about, see, about 1984, I say. Yeah. Well, it must have been before that, because the organ purchase was in eighty. Three, I think. Well, maybe eighty-three. Yeah, and uh, the eighty-three, eighty-four in that in that area. And uh, and that was, of course, thanks to a, a substantial donation from the Golden family that uh, was used to make that acquisition. The organ uh, uh, at Proctor's came from the Paramount Theater in Aurora, Illinois. Oh, that's right. That's right. And uh, spent, I don't know. 20 or 30 years at least. Uh, well, that's, that's not where it was. Yeah, that's it, where it was originally yeah. installed. Yeah, but about 20 years, I think, it was at Claude Newman's in uh, but Minnesota. But it was moved. Yes. Yeah. And uh, the. Uh, the private residence. But when we acquired it, it had been, uh, it had been restored somewhat and put back in very playable condition mm. so that it didn't take very long between the time it was acquired and when we had it playing in Proctor's. Oh, well. About that, a year. Yeah, hell, yeah, a, a little less than that. Yeah, and that's pretty good. Oh. That, that, is a, that is pretty because remarkable. None of the people there were organ builders. Yeah. So that was really something to be proud of, to have been part of that, of yeah. that effort back then, because it was yeah. a lot of work and it, it required a lot of skill and knowledge to, uh, yeah. to achieve that. Most of the time, these projects will spread over two to five years to, to, to get something like that Well, done. the big thing is, another thing about the organ at Proctor's, uh, the action was, when the organ was built, was a big relay board, something like we had down here, you know, with switches all over and things, and that could be a couple of walls and, uh, and space. And... Uh, the man that owned it, I 
guess it was he, got uh, monitored and everything is chips now. And all that big uh, space taken up by the relays is a box about like that. Mm -hmm. The whole thing. Yeah. So uh, uh, there's all, in fact, I have a chip here that works as well on the organ. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with technology. That, no, uh, no. When it, these organs were put together, they used the, the latest technology available. Oh, sure. And anybody building pipe organs today is using the latest technology oh, available. Sure. It, it, they it, have to, to take and, uh, So there's nothing wrong with that. that uh, oh, nothing wrong with it, as long as it works. <laughs> Right, it's always an improvement, or almost always an improvement. So, uh, uh, and then of course that we had the success of getting Alan Mills to join the organization as the house organist. Yeah. And his his skill and reputation in the theater organ world yeah. uh, helped helped put Proctor's on the map yeah. very quickly. Thank you. The discussion about whether the hire was made right in this room. What was that? The discussion whether to hire Alan. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah. Right in this room. Great. And he was enthusiastically nominated. Uh huh. And yeah, that he uh, he was uh, he was he had a very uh, very quick rise to uh, oh, to, yeah. to to uh, to. And you know, uh, a few years well, the year or so after the organ was installed, the Christmas program was done. Entirely at Proctor's with uh, Alan Mills being the organist, sure. and choirs from various places brought in. It 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 uh, yeah. It has to be said that without Alan Mills, mm. you know, the project and the uh, yeah. the, the uh, achievement would yeah. not have been as successful yeah. if Alan Mills hadn't been around to yeah. really uh, build the reputation uh, and uh, and uh, well, we have present the organ to the time. public. A most wonderful thing has just happened. Uh, John Van Lack, who has proven to be a great technician in music, a great musician, but he also has written some music. And he's written a song called Come Along to Proctors. And he has offered this to the theater as a song they can use to promote the theater. Well, John, that's a very nice gift. And, uh, so, uh... You've copyrighted this. I see your uh, late wife's well, name a, is on it. Was she involved? Take that and write them and send them a copy of that and say you want to, maybe I'll have to cite it. If so, I'll be very glad to do that. And just you, so people you, can see, you would keep, you would keep the uh, this is a picture of John playing the organ in 98 and 99. Yeah. So you were involved, and I can recognize Goldie. Well, the important part is you really been dedicated to Proctor's and yeah. you know we, we'd like to be, well, I, be thankful to you for all you've done to make I, I was interested in it and uh, wanted to see it succeed if you can, if you can imagine be, before this uh, uh, non-profit group acquired it they were going to make a parking lot out of Proctor's if you can imagine that wouldn't be too good would it well, John, thank well, you so much, and I'll, I'll uh, take this all back to Proctor's and um, with, with our oh, appreciation. Oh. The only thing I, I will add is that, uh, is that uh, uh, let's see, this is the, uh, we're coming up on the 30th anniversary of the inaugural concert of Goldie, which was in May of 1984. Uh, I, I, I was there. Dennis James. In fact, I picked the organist up at the airport. Uh huh. <laughs> and uh, so we're going to be uh, uh, attempting to put on a special concert program mm -hmm. to commemorate the 30th anniversary mm -hmm. this l later this year. Well, and uh, so we're welcoming you, if you can do it, to uh, to please attend, and uh, we'll take the opportunity to acknowledge that. Uh, that your what the, your your uh, your role in the uh, acquisition of, of Goldie 31 years ago. This is Karen Johnson, and I am here today with two exceptional people: John Van Lack, who was very instrumental in getting the organ at Proctor's, and we want to thank Frank Hackard for being with us today. Uh, this is a Proctor's Historical Committee effort to preserve the history of Proctor's, and we're recording <laughs> on March. 21st, 2014. Thank you all for watching.